So we're going to go over um, a little bit of tech and troubleshooting on a fuel system for a Mustang. Now this is pretty good for 86 to uh, pretty much all the way up to 04. The fuel system was very similar um, after the Fox bodies. Uh, they, they changed a couple things. They took out a, an inertial switch, but um, for the most part it operates the same way. So at any rate, if you're doing some troubleshooting on your fuel system and you're having a hard time understanding why it does what it does, uh, hopefully this will give you some oversight. So, um, this portion is about a relay, and I did it on a, a previous video, we'll get into that, but you're going to need to know how a relay works to, to do some in-depth troubleshooting on your fuel system if you're having problems with it, so keep that in mind. Uh, so we're going to start with the front of the car. You've got your battery. Awesome. So you've got your positive, you've got your negative, uh, your negative of the battery goes to the chassis, and grounds everything, then your positive side of the battery goes to your fuse block, your fuse box. I'm going to put some notes here on positive and negative just so you can kind of follow the, the flow through here. So your fuse box is going to distribute power to everything. So you'll have a fuse for your ECU. There's your ECU here, which your positive. And then it also grounds itself to the chassis. So you've got Negative there. And then your fuse box also goes out uh, to a relay. And that's why you're going to need to know about relays here. So um, if we're going off of this drawing here, this is going to go into 30. So that's your line size. That's your power coming from your fuse box. And power coming in. And then we'll go out on, um, now it depends on the relay. I can't remember exactly. Um, so this, when this coil energizes here, it's going to pull this contact over. So you typically should be on 87 when it goes to 87A when it pulls in. Um, but some relays are a little different, so you'll have to check on your relay. Uh, but you're going to, we'll just mark this as 87A. Get your power going out. And that's going to go to your inertia switch. And I know I mentioned that before. And your inertia switch is just a set of normally closed contacts, normally noted by that. So it's normally a closed set of contacts and it's got a reset button up here on top. And from there, it goes to your fuel pump. And then your fuel pump goes to chassis ground on the negative side. Then your ECU, so your ECU comes into play here. So your fuse box also goes out to your key. So we'll mark this as your key or your ignition switch. And when your key is turned on, it brings power to the coil side of the relay, <coughs> to the positive side. So you've got a coil that's in here. Positive side, negative side. And the negative side comes from the ECU. All right, so this is your system layout here, if you will. So you've got a fuse box with, which distributes your power or your positive 12 volts power to everything. So your key, your relay that operates, your fuel pump, and then your inertia switch, and then your ECU that actually controls your fuel pump based off of this relay. So. You've always got power to your relay. When your key turns on, you've got power to the coil side of this here. And then when your ECU gives a negative or a ground signal to the coil side of this relay, it gives power out to this side, goes through your inertia switch and to your fuel pump. Now your inertia switch is located in the trunk area. And there is a little finger hole so you can hit the reset button on there. And then this relay, this is your fuel pump relay. This is either under the driver's seat. Or it's in the engine bay. They kind of made a little change on that mid midway through. So I think 86 to 88 is going to be under the driver's seat if I remember right. And then 
89 to 93 will be in the engine bay, um, but it just kind of depends on the model and the year that you have, so you'll have to look for that. And it is in the passenger fender area. Okay, so here, I'm going with this one more time. So you've got power that goes out from your battery to your fuse box, and then your fuse box supplies power to your ECU, your ignition switch, which is your key, and also to the relay for your fuel pump. So when you turn your key on, you've got power that comes to this coil side of your fuel pump relay. And then when your ECU gives a chassis ground or negative signal to this relay, it turns the relay on to energize your fuel pump. And then your inertia switch, if it's good, will let power pass through. So your inertia switch was put in, in case of a rollover or an accident, it'll cut your fuel pump off. That's why there's a reset button on it there, that way you can reset it if that happens. I had this happen to me when I was doing a burnout. Um, I guess the rear end hopped a little too much and it <laughs> kicked it out. I also had a uh, trip out of me when I was doing uh, some donuts. So I bypassed this altogether, but most cars will still have that in there. Um, then your fuel pump going. So if you've got power, you turn your key on, and you can hear this relay clicking either in the engine bay or under the dash, then your relay is probably good. Um, a good thing to do is test with a meter. Now your relay, you want to know where it's at first. So you'll have to locate whether it's in the driver's seat or in the engine bay like I noted. Um, so when your key comes on, your relay should click. Now if you can't hear that clicking, then you've probably got that these set of contacts in here are welded or they're broken or the relay is just old, not working anymore. That's typically what you'll see. Um, but if the relay clicks, you can test it, make sure you get power coming out here. And then if you're not getting power or 12 volts positive over here in your fuel pump, check your inertia switch. And if your inertia switch is bad, you can hit that little reset button. Um, and then if you still, if you test and you've got power here, then it's probably your fuel pump. Now, when you turn your key on, your ECU is going to give it a negative signal uh, to ground and your key will have positive there. So when you turn your key on for probably about 10 or 15 seconds, you should have power to this relay here. So you can also test that to make sure you've got a positive and a negative to turn that relay on. Um, and then uh, I've got another video, I'll put a link, uh, I'll put a link so you guys can check it out if you don't know or don't understand the operation of a relay. Um, I kind of go over that, how it works and how to test it. Um, so let's, let's look at a couple of components for your fuel system. Uh, we'll look at where this relay is and I'll show you the inertia switch also. also. Alright, so if you can see right down there, it'd be right in there, that's actually the fuel pump relay. Now normally, I've relocated a lot of things due to my supercharger, but normally right below um, my coil there and the intake piping, right on that strut tower, that's usually where that relay is mounted. I've done a wire tuck, so it's back in there, but uh, so your fuel pump relay could be either there or it could be under the driver's seat. The other seat. place it could so, be yeah. is right underneath your driver's seat. You can see right there. That is actually mine. It's being used for something different now. So I've got a wiring harness from a 92. I needed to do that with my ECU that I've got now. So, But anyway, so depending on which year your car you have, you could have your fuel pump relay under the seat like this. You can kind of see right there in that hole is that little white tab looking thing. Well, that's actually a reset button on the inertia switch, and that's in the right, trunk. That's a pretty good rundown of the fuel system in a Fox body. And like I said, some of the newer Mustangs will have a similar setup. Um, they took out the inertia switch. Uh, that's pretty much just a Fox body debacle. But uh, if you got any more questions, put them in the comments below. Thanks, and we'll catch you next time.